Hey, this is Coach Judith. We are halfway through an episode of Steven's video about creating a video montage or another type of a montage. Uh, he showed us some different montages at the beginning and some of them were clips that he had used from previous episodes. He showed us a montage of words, of words that he had used in previous episodes. And then he showed us a montage of other coding instructors off the internet. So we're going to um, start up the second half right now. Here goes. Uh, what? The thing is, making a montage by hand is not easy, and I don't think I need to show you a montage of me doing that in order to prove that point. And okay, so when he says making a montage um, by hand, I think what he means is taking video clips and putting them together in another video editing program. The one he's been using is an open source downloadable for free program called Shotcut. Uh, and so what he's saying is doing it by hand is kind of slow and tedious, but Steven is a coder. So he has, I bet, made it a lot less tedious. It's difficult whether or not you do it in code or in a video editor. Either way, you have to micromanage when things start and end, and it takes some time. However, there is an advantage to doing it in code, not didn't you know there was going to be an advantage to doing it in code? So we have seen in many of the prior episodes um, the advantages that Stephen has shown using code in all different things in his life, in creating videos, in, in automating all kinds of things. And we have actually done this in our office too, processes that we used to do by hand, that where we put things into a spreadsheet and move them around. We have automated them using code and made them much faster, sending out emails to groups of people, um, all kinds of things, creating class lists for our students. Uh, we have seen, we all believed it when we started doing it, but we have seen it firsthand in our Metacoders office that things that you can automate using code really does free up your life for other things that you would prefer to be doing. So uh, let's see some of the other things that Stephen has, some of the other advantages that Stephen's going to talk about um, with using code to create video montages. By hand in a video editor. And that is simply that once you have done it in code, you can now use that montage in other code. For example, let's just say I have, and I'm picking this totally at random, a montage of me saying the most common word in the first five videos of my show and in the second five videos of my show. Okay, so Steven says just at random, but we know it's never just at random. He actually did at the first half of this video, he showed us a montage of five of his first five episodes and five of his most recent episodes. And he put those together in a video montage, two different video montages. Um, and now I think he is going to combine those using code. So I am 100% sure that he created his montages using code. And now that he has already done that, we're going to see the advantages of other things you can do with the code by rearranging some things. I can now, with additional code, interleave those two montages. And now I have a commentary on both my later work and my earlier work here. So the word interleave, uh, what that means is, um, so if these were the first five and these were the second five, then he can play them like this, where you see some of the first and some of the second sort of squish together there. So instead of seeing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, you might see, oh, let's do it like this. Maybe you'll see one and then five and then two and three and then six and then I don't even know what number up, but you get the idea. You can interleave them. Let's see these montages. Let's watch. Something from that video, and, and it saves me time from now. The QR code would link to a... If you're just a really, really good video editor, I would feed my whole project folder into my code. Use, and you make a video of you doing it. If, of those who see the QR code, some of them won't scan, but some will. Uploaded a four minute video on the concept of building something or writing code, as we'll do in a moment. Beginning of her speech. It's a BBC video. My plan is to write code that video. It's a BBC video of the Queen. It's outputs of my own code, creatively inside of Shotcut, 
Me the BBC video of the queen giving a bring your paper. Go look at the code. Just two videos ago, I posted write code before they've learned how people to create video content to try how to read code or think on paper. A repository meta viral video. Once upon a time. Okay, I have to stop it here. I'm actually getting a little dizzy. I want to review this in sort of slow mo because this is making me a little dizzy. So here's the Stephen talking about interleaving, and let's just review some of these. So here is one video clip. And there was like a second one that sort of got in the middle of, and he went back here to that first one. And that's the same, I think that's the same second one now. So he has like one and then a different one, but he has them sort of squished together there and he cut them in kind of in half. And there is that same first video and there's that same second video. And now, and I can just tell because he's wearing a different shirt, maybe a little bit different background. Now this is a third, a new video clip that we're watching and that is being interleaved with a, maybe a fourth one there. And there's the Queen of England and back to that fourth one and the Queen of England again. And there's that original one of Stephen and some shot cut. Okay, so you get the idea that he's taking these clips and whereas before he just had like five clips, one, two, three, four, five, and now he's able to do things where he's putting in between one part inside the other part. What do you think? How does that interleaving make it more interesting or more confusing or it made me a little dizzy? Do you think that adds to the interest level? Maybe you want to see more because like, wow, this is very different. Um so I'm not sure where I am the interleaving. We'll just watch it a little bit more here. BBC video of the queen giving a- Bring your paper. Go look at the code. Just two videos ago, I posted write code before they've learned how people to create video content to try how to read code or think on paper. In a repository called Meta Viral Video. Once upon a time, I was just a normal oh, I think this is where And we suppose were. I have, and again- Whew, okay, so that was the interleaving of the videos. Now let's see what else he's gonna teach us. And picking this totally at random, a montage of a bunch of YouTube coding instructors. I could, now that I have code that generates that montage, slightly change it such that I focus in on two of them. But un unlike code babes, I actually think the two that I'm about to show are, are good. Let's see if you- Okay, so what we also saw in the first half of the video, which is where we left off, was Stephen went on the internet, and there's a lot of people that you can learn to code from on the internet, including Stephen, including me. Uh, and he downloaded some of their video clips, and he put them together, and you could see all the differences. It was very clear. Some were in their um, offices, and some were in their um, living rooms, and some were in front of a computer, and some weren't in front of a computer. They had all different backdrops, all different styles. And now um, he is going to take, he's going to take a montage of, he's going to interleave the video clips that he has, and we're going to see, I guess, Stephen's favorite two of the ones that he's downloaded. Um, let's let's watch this montage. You, by watching this montage, get a sense of the differing worldview of each instructor. What's up, guys? John Sonomas here from simpleprogrammer.com, and today we're going to be talking about... Hi, my name is Catherine, and today I'm going to show you how you can learn how to code in six months. ...about feeling lost after completing a programming course. And it's best to start with something called the terminal or the command line. Okay, we're gonna watch a little bit more of this montage, but I do wanna comment. So um, these two coding instructors are very different and it's really clear the way he has interleaved the two little video clips. So here we have um, the first, he isn't in front of a computer. He, he, to me, he looks like more of an athlete. He has these medals behind him. And he's t he said something about um, how you were lost after learning how to code. And then we compare him to this one who she is in front of a computer. She looks like she's in maybe even a soundstage. I'm not sure. She's smiling. She's looking at the camera. She is, to me, projecting that coding um, isn't something to be afraid of. It isn't something that, you, you know, maybe is look at how smiley she is. This is going to be fun. This is going to be a great process. We're going back to him and he's not really looking at us. I'm not sure why. There he goes. Okay. And then back to her with a smiling face. Let's, let's just keep watching. 
to start with something called the terminal or the command line. And on this channel, we teach soft skills. On the most basic level. So if you haven't... Did you hear him say he teaches soft skills and she's teaching command line? Those are really opposites. One is very technical and the other is more about... Um, maybe personality and how you deal with frustration. I'm not really sure. I haven't learned from either of those instructors. If you have a Mac, then this is going to look familiar. I teach you what you need to know to become not just a better developer, but a to you. If you don't, that's okay. But if you've ever like seen the hacker move. All right. Um, so cool people at the end. We still have 20 seconds. So I would like to see what um, the last 20 seconds of this are. Uh, and then of course, Stephen puts this little Stephen joke, the end, right? No, clearly it's not at the end because we still have 20 seconds. But I uh, just want to uh, again say that using that interleaving technology, we really did see the contrast between two of the people that Stephen thought were both doing a really great job of teaching coding on the internet, but completely different styles, uh, completely different ways of teaching. And it was very clear when we were able to interleave those um, video clips. Code babes, I have to tell you something. I didn't know you existed until I started looking for programming instructors on the internet and you came up. Let's just say we are going to meet again on a future episode. I have some things to say. Okay, I am not even gonna comment on that, but I do like that Stephen is ending this with a quote from the Queen of England. Uh, this was the message that she told her people and really the world that we are all stuck at home. I'm stuck at home here in San Diego, California. I'm assuming that those of you watching are also stuck at home and let us all hope that this message from the queen will come true again really soon that we will get to meet in person uh one time in the future in the near future and let's listen to that little fade out music at the end that does conclude the second half of this episode thank you so much for watching